Gen Con 2023 continues. It is Friday afternoon, and one of my favorite people in the hobby is joining me. We talk <laughs> pretty much almost every year. Yep. As long as there's not a pandemic going on. Ugh. Dominic McDowell, good, good to, to meet. see you. You too. So How you was just it? said good to meet you? Uh, you're defining that as like a first meeting. You can have many meetings. There's uh, there's the third meeting, which is always uh, He's forgotten you, me set, you settle into comfortableness. I think at the third right, meeting go, right. and the fifth meeting, it's a bit over familiar. Um, okay. Then then but then sixth seventh, I think that that starts to nail it. Doesn't so when does so, second breakfast take place? Though? Um, that well, that actually happens around every meeting. Um, there so go. Right. that's uh, yeah. So uh, yeah. So there's lots going on. With <laughs> Seven Entertainment. There always is. Yep. And. Um, there are a lot of systems we can talk about, but mm -hmm. let's talk about a new game that is on the horizon. You have the only copy uh, in existence right here. Look at that. That's, uh, yeah, very exciting. This is a preview copy. Um, so Imperium Maledictum is our D100 Warhammer 40,000 role-playing game, uh, focusing on investigation and uh, the corruption within the Imperium. So uh, it's, yeah, lots of uh, intrigue, lots of, uh, yeah, deadly things going on um, and you're trying to get to the bottom of it you're you're working for a patron and i think this is something that's that's really cool with this one so um i think with, with uh, a setting that's as vast as uh, the imperium in one forty thousand um you know there's um a, a, for a lot of people they're kind of they're, they're in their place you know that they are uh, maybe in the astra militarum and they are being sent around doing things um sent off to, to the, the war zones um if they're in the um, the administratum then you know generally you know you've got that's the the office job for life that uh, yeah, that there's no getting away from. Um, but um, it's hard for the individual citizens to kind of break out of, of what they're doing. So with, um, with Imperium Maledictum, you're working for a patron who's a really powerful individual, um, and you've come to their attention for some reason, you know, probably because they just need some plausibly deniable resource. Sure, of course. Um, so they pluck you from your place in the machinery of the Imperium um, and forge you into a, a team to go and uh, look into things that they want looked into. Well, like troubleshooters. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Yeah. yeah. So... so you're not taking on the role of like powerful space marines and things like that. You're more, I don't want to say average Joes, but <laughs> yeah. But it, it's not that huge power level. So yeah. it's, it's not like, oh yeah, we can take on all the tyrannids. It's no problem. No, absolutely, absolutely. No, you're, uh, you'll need help for that. You're kind of setting the scene for like the space marines to yeah. do things. Absolutely, yeah, yeah right. definitely. So, um, I mean, and you could be working for, uh, for an Inquisitor. So, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, so some of the, the game setups from some of the previous uh, Warhammer 40,000 role playing games, um, you know, you'll, you'll recognize. So, um, you know, playing an Inquisitor's Retinue um, or playing uh, maybe, you know, an, an Admech um, uh, Fabricator General who, who wants some stuff looked into. Um, yeah, so there's, there's a huge range. It's uh, it's really cool. And in, in the rulebook as well, I think there's there's um, your faction will come from um, quite a, a good range of, of factions are available. And I'm trying to remember now if it's nine or ten because it's Gen Con and my brain's gone to right, mush. I get it. But um, yeah, it's it's uh, you, you, you're drawing those patrons from from a, a wide range of places. There's a, a huge range of stuff that you can do with this rulebook. So uh, and and that's kind of like the approach that we decided to take. I think with with the previous D100 games. Um, you had a rule book that looked at uh, for each faction. Um, so uh, what I wanted to do with this one was, was have one rule book and then we'll expand each faction with like supplemental core releases. Sure. Yeah. So, um, you know, the, 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 the rules are the rules. Um, and then you'll buy the, the Inquisition um, set will be the first one that we will be uh, producing. Um, there'll be a player's guide that gives you loads of extra options for Inquisition characters and patrons. Um, and then a GM's guide that gives you a really good campaign setting and uh, uh, advice on, on running that faction um, in the game. So, I mean, as well as that, it's all set in the Macarian sector, which is uh, one of the storied um, sectors of the Imperium. Um, it was all conquered by uh, Lord Solar Macarius um, in, in you know, relatively recent history. So you've got a little bit of the aftermath of that all going on. Um, it's, fortunately for the player characters, it's in the, uh, the Imperium Sanctum. So that's the bit that still is directly under Imperial control. Um, it still has the Astronomicon and things like that. So uh, after the, the Cicatrix Maledictum split the galaxy in two, um, the, you're on the good side. Um, so uh, yeah, we'll, we'll uh, let you get used to that uh, and this is <laughs> before PDF. taking you. This is yeah, absolutely. Out for a bit. Yep, it's um, uh, the physical stock will be turning up in November, I think. So yeah, okay. should be a street date in the US. I think we're shooting for the 15th of November. Okay. Um, so it's 
you know, just about to get on the boat, so uh, there we'll can be see, some uh, slips there. But uh, There's a good amount of stuff coming out from Cubicle 7 Entertainment in November. Indeed, yes. So uh, after you've checked out Imperial Maledictum, uh, we also have Doctors and Daleks. Mm -hmm. So that's our 5e uh, Doctor Who adaptation, which was just like a crazy amount of fun to have. Um, I think trying to bring, bring uh, non-violent conflict resolution to 5e it that's was tricky it was a oh yep yeah. i can't help myself though i think those sort of design challenges are just course, ah, right. they're so good so um yeah it, it's uh, I don't, well judging from the feedback i think we, we've uh, we've hit that mark really well so if you're you know, even even if you're just looking for something for 5e that helps you to do um, yeah non-violent conflicts things where you can literally talk your way out of a situation um or convince people um or thoroughly defeat them with your logic then uh, yeah that's uh, that's the game to try out. Um, yeah. And let's let's give some love to the Doctor Who role-playing game as well. Indeed. Which is its own system. Yeah, excellent. And of course, you're seeing B-roll, all this stuff while we're talking. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the, the collector's edition for the second edition is so gorgeous. It's uh... You saw the video, folks. I've got the video <laughs> of it. Yep. If you haven't checked it out, you can definitely wear it. It opens yeah. up like the doors of yep. the TARDIS. Yeah, it's good. It's good. We had too much fun doing that stuff. It That's, is really uh, cool. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, lots more for Doctor Who. Uh, we've got um, a twin um, set coming out uh, that's a celebration for the 60th anniversary of the show. So it's, uh, yeah, oh, it's amazing, isn't it? I mean, it's oh, just, yeah. well, it, it is television's longest running sci-fi science fiction yes. show. Um, it's, uh, yeah, there's just so much history in it, so much cool stuff. It's, it's just really lovely to be involved. And it's such a huge sandbox to play in. Too. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you don't even have to play as the Doctor in... His or her companions, <laughs> you, can, you can play as you know, yeah. like time agents, and yeah, yeah, your own time like lords, yeah, or, or just cool. like a random group of people who yeah. uh, went to Gen Con and uh, right. ended up defeating the Daleks. And, and they found a time machine <laughs> and they, they were all, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so another recent release we should talk about is Uncharted Journeys, yes. Um, I'm going to put this down here. Uh, yes, so, yeah, I mean, like with, like with Doctors and Daleks, um, we really love tinkering with, with stuff around 5e. So uh, I think that there's, um, uh, there's a particular kind of design work that C7 does that just really um, uh, yeah, brings out some, some great things in other systems as well. So uh, the um, Uncharted Journeys is really expanded journey rules um, for, for your 5e games. Yeah, yes. yeah. So, um, there, I mean, there's so much in it, isn't there? It's, I mean, oh, it's a huge gosh. book. But um, if you're looking I've for something... I've got a first to... video, everybody. Check it out. <laughs> I mean, everything we talk about that's out in print, you've probably already seen the videos. But yeah. But yes, yeah. That, and it's... Uh, one thing I found very interesting, I haven't done the review yet. Yeah. But I find it, it's very interesting that most dungeon masters, usually when they're running a game, mm. it's sort of like, oh, three days later, you arrive Yeah. And, well, this actually allows you to flesh that out and to make that adventure much fuller. Yeah. And there are hundreds of encounters yeah. included in the book, all by various terrain and things yep. like that. Really, really nicely done. No, thank you. Yeah, People were that's... excited when I was doing the live video, oh, taking great. a look at it. Excellent. Like, yeah. Hey, yeah. This is, where do I get this? There's just so much cool narrative stuff in there, isn't yes. there? You know, it, it just puts that... Um, I think, it, again, it's trying to get that sweet spot of adding interest and you know a feel, adding to the feeling of immersion in the world mm -hmm. without making something clunky or um, something that's going to delay anything else you know it, or, or something that just doesn't feel organic to yeah the yeah play, absolutely sort of like how did why did you throw that in yeah you know? yeah absolutely so, so uh, got to give some love out to that thank you yeah so we also have one of my favorites from Cubicle 7 Entertainment. Yep. Warhammer Fantasy Rolls. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah. So last year <laughs> we talked about how the director's cut of The Enemy Within had wrapped up. Yep. And yeah, yeah, so good. You're kind of... The latest releases, which I think the next in print is Lustria? Yeah, so we, we've just had... Um, so this year, Up in Arms, mm -hmm. uh, which was more that player options. Him. Ah, we'll get you a copy. Yeah, we'll um, take that. So, um, yeah, more player options for uh, for, fighters, for soldiers. Right? Yeah, well, like martial type. Exactly. I guess I should say. Yeah, Not fighters, martial type. Exactly. Yeah, knights and soldiers and right. watchmen and all that sort of stuff. So that's um, that's really cool. Uh, the Imperial Zoo landed this year, um, which is the only bestiary. Yeah, we did have feedback from a customer. It was like, this is the only bestiary that made me cry. 
because um, there's a narrative that runs through right. it and it gets quite poignant in a few places. Right. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's really cool. It's, um, uh, the, the subtitle is um, was it the, the, the account of three um, voyages of discovery. I can't remember the right. phrase now, but, right, but it's, right. it's the Imperial Zoo has commissioned people to go and uh, document creatures and, and catalogue them and things like that. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's really cool. I mean, loads of great monsters in there, loads of really good adventure stuff. Um, and, um, yeah, that, 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 that narrative that goes through that's, uh, yeah, really good. So, I always fact, love Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay because uh, it is a very unique setting. Yeah. And it's not tongue-in-cheek, <laughs> but it doesn't necessarily always take itself really seriously. And yeah. then some adventurers can kind of switch gears like, oh, my yeah. gosh, the fate of the world is at stake. And we're all covered in shit. Yeah, kind of, <laughs> kind of thing. But I, th I think that's life, though, isn't it? You know, exactly. it's, it's that I think kind that's of. That's one of the reasons why I yeah. like it so much is the characters aren't super heroic. They can be heroic, yeah. or they can be rogues. Yeah. But it's not like you can believe in them, can't you? Yes, you can right. see There's yourself in. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I think yeah, that that's um, just like you know when we have bad things happening, then sometimes we need to laugh at them. I, I think it's that's reflected try in the. To. Yeah, yeah, but um, yeah, and I, I th but I think that's that's the kind of vibe that it has, doesn't right. it? Yeah, it's cool. So we've got, we have we've got to, oh, well, the Imperials to show you. Oh, here we yeah, go. Yeah, let's do. We're just talking the, about that. That's the uh, collector's edition. Oh, it is. Oh, yeah, yeah it's very lovely. Uh, very nice. Uh, so is that one? Um, Winds of Magic has just landed as well. That's very yes. shiny. Ooh. That is my next first look video. That oh, just great. arrived. Excellent. So that'll yeah. probably be next week. Then. Yeah. Excellent. All magic. All magic all the time. So, uh, so now, that's great. Has it revamped the magic system a little bit? Because one thing, the only real yeah. knock I ever hear about Warhammer Fantasy mm. Roleplay, the fourth edition, yeah. is that the magic system's a little clunky. Yeah, there, there's a couple of um, elements to it. I think that um, uh, that the yeah, if, if you're not approaching it in the right way, then it can it can be a little bit like that. And there were a few things. I mean, I think with um, the amount of playtesting that that a game like Waffer up gets. Yes. I mean, after its release, you of know, course, it, it's yeah. just there's so many games going on that um, it's, it's it's great for us because we get so much feedback. So, sure. and then we're able to to come back in supplements and sort of tweak things that uh, um, that sort of like that larger pool brings back in terms of comments, um, which you know, with the best will in the world before a game's released, you're never going to have that many, you know, that number of eyeballs on it. So, um, so yes, there was a, there was a tweak um, to is the way that channeling works and interacts okay. with things. So uh, there's a couple of things there. I mean, like with Up in Arms as well, there were some combat options okay. that we we explored and, and um, you know presented some alternatives for people who you know weren't finding some of the things uh, maybe in the rule book weren't working for them. But uh, I mean, I think that was our approach with Worth Work generally was. Um, I don't mean a bit tongue in cheek, but you know, we would say it's your hammer, right. um, and you know, everybody's got a different way of playing things. So even in the core rulebook, we were presenting options for um, you know people who may have a certain preference for playstyle to do it one way, whereas you know maybe there's a quick way of doing it, or maybe a slightly more um, uh, a crunchier way of doing sure. it. So and then people can decide on that. So uh, yeah, pick and choose. Absolutely, yeah. Um, so yeah, Windsor Magic um, has that. Uh, yeah, that, that sort of. Um, yeah, a little bit of uh, an adjustment to that part of the, the spell casting well, of system. Of course, there's more spells and everything. Huge obviously. amounts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Loads of um, you know, options for, for wizard players as well. So that's cool. So let's talk yeah. about real quick uh, Broken Weave. Yes, that was a broken. successful Kickstarter. Yeah, that was nice, wasn't it? Well, we haven't done an awful lot of Kickstarters. No, you have not. So um, the it was yeah, it's been really nice to to do uh, Uncharted Journeys and then Broken Weave and uh, just seeing how well people are re re responding to them. It's really lovely. Yeah, really nice. When is that uh, physical edition going to arrive? So at the moment we're looking at um, November. No, <laughs> maybe. No, no. <laughs> like you're like maybe. I think it'll be. But look like it's like no. Yeah, yeah. The uh, the warehouse stuff say no. Um, um, so I think it'll be um, at the moment it's looking sort of like December, January. Okay. Pro probably January for shipping out because everything shuts off. down. No, no, absolutely. Um, but yeah, it's coming together, lovely. Um, I think the it's really nice to just be able to. Um, uh, 
explore that kind of, um, I don't know, just the craziness, I think, that you have in something like a, a post-apocalypse, psychedelic kind of inspired right. system. But uh, okay. um, for me, I think with Broken Reaver, it's, it's really nice to tell that um, hope-filled, post-apocalypse kind of right. story. So, you know, so the um, you know, magic has broken, the world's kind of fallen apart, the dust has settled, and you're in that, okay, and, and now we've got to build the future. Sure. Uh, which is, I, I find that really exciting. So you know, you've got your haven, and your, your, there's full rules for generating that. That's the settlement of survivors that you put together, um, and then it's up to the players then how they how, how are they going to try and rebuild this, this broken world. So uh, yeah, it's uh, yeah, lots of really nice themes in there, um, and lots of weirdness. So nice. yeah, we like that. And it's one of the things, as you mentioned, there's hope. So it, yeah. it is kind of a, a dark setting, but yeah. it's not grim dark where, oh, the world's ending, nothing we can do about it. No, the worst has happened. Right. You know? <laughs> so it, it, it is only up from here. And you know, yes, it's dangerous. And you know, there, yes, there's, um, uh, there, there's big sort of agents of decay around the place that, um, that, that, that are um, the, the power sort of of the breaking. Um, so, you know, there's, there's plenty of danger out there. But, um, you yeah, know, it, it's about... Um, I'll uh, try to give a good example. So the everything's fractured to the extent that kind of memories have been lost and that's sort of reflected in like the landscape as well. So you've got um the the uh, uh the time space um uh yeah, what I'm trying to say, the uh, the interrelation is is all over the place. So distance is variable. Um time can be variable in some places. Yeah. So um, the uh, but the way that you can try and sort of like pull everything together is by traveling places and leaving ways markers and um, trying to build the route. Um, and like the more people who get the route into their memories, um, the more solid that actually right, becomes. I get it. Yeah. Yes. So um, the, uh, the 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 more people that like, give each other mementos to remember them by, and it just starts to re-solidify a world that's kind of come apart at the seams. So uh, yeah, oh, there's, there's really loads unique. in it. It's cool. It yeah, it's really, really cool. <laughs> Any other items you want to talk about? I know there's so much going on with Cubicle Seven. Yeah. And I know every year we always miss something. Yeah, we, oh, we usually do. About. Yeah. So Soulbound um, yes. is uh, very excitingly uh, about to enter its year of chaos. Okay. So uh, that's going to be very cool. We've got um, uh, what have we got? We've got Ruins of the Past and Ulfen Khan coming up. Wolfenkahn, the Cursed City, is one of the coolest city guides we've done. So uh, it's a city that's kind of been pulled into the uh, the vortex of the Shaish Nadir. So uh, it's pretty doomed. But Glad as, you as if, said that, and I didn't have to. <laughs> but as if, if we didn't have enough problems, it's been taken over by a vampire king. So uh, it is, it's horrendous. Um, it's, uh, um, we've, we've done a grim and perilous rule setting for it as well, so yeah. it's a, a lower power level than the yeah. usual Soulbound. Right, that's so, one thing I was going to mention is yeah. that with Soulbound, it, it is Age of Sigmar, yep. and your characters tend to be pretty epic heroes oh, to yeah, start definitely. with. Yep. It's a really satisfying power level. Um, and I think that was one of the things that really struck me when we were doing our play tests um, leading up to release. It just felt so good. You, you know? don't start off by going to the tavern to go kill the rats in the basement. No, no, the rats are long behind you. You know, you, you have thousands of rats. Right. <laughs> um, yeah, no, you're, you're, um, yeah, you can do stuff straight out the gate. That is just awesome. Um, and you know, you're still, um, you know, there's plenty in the mortal realms that um, it is more than capable of taking your head off, but um, just for that sort of like standard, you know, if you're fighting against the um, uh, the Chaos War Band, then you know you're going to be able to to chop through those. Um, it's yeah, yeah, it's really really satisfying. So so it's interesting then to have that grim and perilous where oh you feel so vulnerable all of a sudden, mm -hmm. and you're in the vampire city trying to work out how you're going to survive and, and hopefully fight back. So uh, yeah, that's really cool. Um, but yeah, the Year of Chaos will be coming, so that's where we're looking at. Um, a new um, standalone uh, rulebook in our um, Age of Sigmar role-playing um, uh, range. Um, it's chaos-based, so uh, Joe, we're still working on the title. And when it's Champions of Chaos, I think it, I don't think it'll be that when it comes out. Um, but um, yeah, that, that, that will open up the the chaos faction uh, for playable characters. So, and again, you're going to be that sort of good power level. Yeah. So um, you're, you're going to be some of the movers and shakers. The, you're, you're the plotters and planners. Um, of chaos, um, I mean, yeah, you can still minions. exactly, yeah, you know, you can still play a powerful, um, you know, warrior character, um, but you're that that higher level. You're you're the um, the organizers and the leaders, um, 
yeah, rather than the minions. So uh, if you've ever wanted to uh, corrupt a city of Sigma from within, then that'll be your, uh, your, your opportunity to do it. So uh, yeah, that's coming together very well. And there'll be a couple more Chaos themed products as well next year as well. So uh, there'll be um, so the Path of Glory, which is going to be a lot low level. Um, like more like the uh, the Warcry warbands, um, okay. the uh, they, who might not even know that they're allied with Chaos. Um, you know, they, they just know that in their village they leave that sacrifice out and sure. their crops grow. That's so, how it's always been. Exactly. Sure. Yeah. So it'll be that path from realizing, wait a minute, that there is more at play here. There's more in the world, um, and, and starting their path as uh, up to sort of champions of Chaos. So, so yeah, that's going to be really exciting. Yeah, Anything else that. you want to share? Um, I can't remember what we said now at all, so I, I'm lost. All right, we'll start from the top. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> Any final words you want to share with the audience down? Um, hello, the audience. Um, no, it's uh, yeah, lovely to be here, lovely to catch up, as of usual. Um, thanks to everybody um, uh, for, for enjoying our stuff. It's always just really, really humbling for me that uh, you know, so many people get a kick out of, uh, of what we do. So, uh, yeah, no, thanks. It uh, yeah, means everything to me. Excellent. Thank you so much for taking time out as <laughs> usual. You're welcome. Yeah, thanks, for, thanks for dropping by. Thanks for having me. <laughs>